You know, it never ceases to amaze me how dumb the decisions people make are sometimes. And one of the latest examples of the really stupid financial decisions that people are making are getting themselves into these massive car payments each month. We're talking well over a thousand dollars a month in some cases. And even if you're just a regular person looking to buy a regular car right now, it is very difficult to get a car payment below you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars a month right now, guys. Like that's kind of like the standard, even for buying just a mediocre used car or one of the cheapest brand new cars out there you can find. And part of that is due to the high interest rates. However, when people have car payments that are well over a thousand dollars a month, you know it's because they are not smart with their finances. And I read a story today about a girl on TikTok who has not one but two car payments, in fact, big SUV payments that are over a thousand dollars a month. Check out what she has going on here. She's got one Chevy Tahoe that cost her $84,000 that she financed at a 10% interest rate, okay? And then her husband has a GMC Sierra pickup truck, all right? That was 78,000 and they financed that at a 14% interest rate, okay? And guess what? The car payments on these things are astronomical. The Tahoe payment is $1,400 a month, and the GMC Sierra payment is $1,600 a month. That's a whopping $3,000 in car payments alone, guys. Regardless of all the other household expenses they might have, that is an absolute joke right now that people are doing this. And, you know, these are the same kind of people that cry for student loan forgiveness and want free government handouts and all of this and yet they can go out there and get three thousand dollars worth of car loan debt each month now, i'm not saying that this couple in particular is getting student loan forgiveness or they've been asking for that but i'm saying this is the type of personality the type of mentality of people that do stuff like this okay they make very stupid financial decisions and then they expect to be bailed out by the taxpayer dollar. Now this girl knows that she made a mistake because she even made a video on TikTok saying, you know, why did I do this to myself? A lot of people's house payments are less than what they're paying for these vehicles right now. But unfortunately, she's not alone in making these poor financial decisions, okay? Because the amount of Americans right now that have car payments over $1,000 a month is continuing to rise. Uh, in fact, by February of 2024, about 17.5% of new cars were financed with a monthly payment over $1,000 a month, okay? Compared to only 5% in February of 2020, guys. So we're talking the amount of people that are doing this has gone up 3x in the past four years, which is an absolute joke. And then these are the same people that cry that they're broke. They say if you want to buy a large brand new SUV, 70% of the monthly payments right now are going to be over $1,000 a month. And same goes for trucks and, you know, the big vehicles that now cost a minimum of 70 k for the most part. And get this, large trucks are the third best selling category in the U.S. for vehicle sales right underneath uh, compact cars and mid-size SUVs, all right? So large trucks are the number one vehicle that people are buying and then you have the other end of the spectrum small compact cars people going for the cheapest car out there and then mid-size suvs which is like something what i drive i have a jeep grand cherokee and here's the other crazy thing 59 percent of u.s households have more than one car and if you're getting a new car or even a used car that means most households also have at least two car payments to contend with rather than just one on top of the astronomical cost of living that we have right now. And this is not good because right now, the average car loan balance as of 2023 was almost $24,000, which is up 5.2% from the previous year. So we can reasonably estimate that those are 2023 numbers heading into 2024, it might be up another three to 5% this year because these vehicles are still extremely expensive and people have to finance more of it because of the higher interest rates now. Now this girl on TikTok, she doesn't want to talk about how much money she makes, but she says that she can afford these payments 
but she doesn't want to pay for it anymore. She's looking at the Tahoe and looking like, okay, I've already paid over $50,000 in monthly loan payments, and I've only paid down 10,000 of it in principal, guys. So literally 40 grand has been flushed down the toilet due to the high interest rates and the high cost that she paid for this car and it's all been wasted just to drive this car around for the past you know year or whatever and just 40 grand wasted like that on a car that nobody needs clearly they don't need these two brand new big vehicles because they're going to be getting rid of one of them So apparently after realizing that she just flushed $40,000 down the toilet in interest payments, okay, not even for something useful, just giving it away to the bank, okay, <laughs> she also has decided that she is going to pay off her $10,000 that she has in credit card debt that she's making off the TikTok channel. And from now on, she's going to be covering her expenses with cash rather than using borrowed funds. So. You know, some people have to learn the hard way and get smacked upside the head with this big debt hammer to realize that this is not a sustainable way to live life. And lucky for her, she has the money to pay off that $10,000 in credit card debt and to sell this car and get out from underneath it, even though she's probably gonna lose money. Not only you lost the 40 grand that you gave away in interest, but you're also gonna be losing a big chunk of the purchase price since you bought the car brand new. But very few people are getting the memo on this because the average used car price in February of 2024 is about $26,752. But only one third of people purchase those cars with cash or even outside financing, meaning outside of the dealership. So actually, even less than one third of those sales are cash sales, meaning people didn't take on any debt to buy these vehicles, guys. So that means you can reasonably draw a conclusion that 75% of people that buy cars have a car payment. Now the experts say you shouldn't spend more than 10% of your monthly take home pay on car payments and no more than 15 to 20% on transportation costs for those who own cars, which includes your car payment, your insurance, and your fuel each month. And you can also throw in there tolls and maintenance as well because if you live in an area you have to drive on toll roads a lot that can add up pretty quickly and also the maintenance on the cars isn't free guys now in 2022 the average household spends almost thirteen thousand dollars a year on transportation which accounts for about 15 percent of their after-tax income so that is a pretty substantial chunk, but it actually gets worse for the lower income earners because they actually spend a lot less, but it's a big, bigger chunk of their income. People who are in the low income brackets only spend about $5,000 a year on transportation, but that represents about 30% of their after-tax income. So it's getting to the point where people won't even be able to afford to go to work anymore pretty soon if this keeps rising, you know? Like, I talk about inflation, I talk about the economy a lot on this channel, and when you see how much people are spending just for basic transportation, it is out of control, guys. And some people just take it too much to the extreme, like this girl from TikTok. You know, let's buy two cars and have $3,000 a month payment. Like, yeah, congratulations to her for that they're going to get rid of one of them. Well, they're still going to have the truck payment for $1,600 a month. That doesn't absolve you of this, you know. You're still extremely guilty. Maybe you and your husband are well off and can afford that. And good for you if that's the case but it's still stupid there's nothing else to it guys it's still dumb to have a car payment like that honestly no matter how rich i get in this life no matter how much money i have i will never have a 1600 a month car payment because if i can afford a car that costs that much i will just buy it and pay cash okay that's why i don't have a car payment right now because i paid cash with the trade-in of my last jeep plus this one i paid cash no payment that's it. Because if you can't afford to pay cash for this stuff, then the truth is you can't afford it. And that lesson holds true with basically everything in life, especially car payments. Now, one thing a lot of people wanna see is some solid evidence that the economy is going in the wrong direction. Because a lot of people say, oh, Michael, you talk about all of this, that, you know, 
the economy is upside down, but we still see the stock market going well. We still see the real estate market going well and unemployment still low. That's like the holy trinity of the economy for most people. And they think that as long as those things are okay, then all must be right in the world. But that's not the case. And that is because the leading indicators for the US economy fell in March, just one month after posting the first increase in two years. This is a huge sign that the US economy is starting to falter, okay? The index of leading economic indicators dropped 0.3% last month According to the conference board, the leading index is a gauge designed to show whether the economy is getting better or worse. And economists who were polled by the Wall Street Journal forecasted a 0.1% decline, but actually went down 0.3%. So worse than they anticipated. And check this out, guys. The last two times that the index experienced such large declines, a recession ensued. But the pandemic and its aftermath has partly severed typical economic patterns, which I would go on to also add to that, that has temporarily severed typical economic patterns. But we are starting to, to get back into a normal pattern now, which is why you're seeing these economic indicators start to falter. They say this is because of all sorts of reasons right now. It's because of weaker business orders, which means people are not buying as much. It's also because of lower consumer confidence and because fewer permits to build new houses are being issued. They're saying that overall right now, this index points to a fragile, if not recessionary outlook for the US economy. Hmm. Sounds familiar, right? That sounds like something that we've been talking about here for over a year now. And a lot of people are upset saying, oh, it's not happening, so you must be lying, or you know, you don't know what you're talking about. No, it just means that me and others like me are early to the game and saw the signs that this was coming down the road several miles away, That and just most other people couldn't see it, guys. That's all it means. It doesn't mean that you're wrong, it means that you're early. It's like showing up to a party three hours before it starts. Like, well, I didn't get the date wrong. I'm here. I'm just not here on time, okay? And there are a lot of signs of distress right now. You know, the layoffs so far in 2024 have been rampant. But another thing that has also been ticking up has been bankruptcies, especially corporate ones and personal bankruptcies. And because of these bankruptcies, we are seeing businesses close, okay? We've seen Walmart and Target and Walgreens all close locations over the past couple of years due to the uptick in theft, okay? They've even come out and said it. Most of the time they don't wanna come out and say it like that. They use nice words like retail shrink, you know? Okay, but it's people stealing. And then you just had a major bankruptcy with the 99 cent stores in California and they're closing down all 371 of its stores and then the latest one is Rite Aid, okay? Rite Aid is a big drugstore chain, kind of like Walgreens and CVS and those guys. Well, they filed for bankruptcy and they're closing down more stores now. After their bankruptcy filing, they just filed a notice earlier this month to close down 13 additional stores located in the East and the Midwest, which includes stores in Pennsylvania, Ohio, New Jersey, New York and Virginia. That brings their total store closures to 322 of their 2100 stores. These guys have $3.3 billion in debt right now that they're trying to rebalance and erase through this bankruptcy. So these guys are continually closing stores as the months pass by and their financial troubles get bigger, guys. So, you know, how many different examples do people need to see that things are not getting better right now. They're actually getting worse because we don't have any real solid evidence that things are headed in the right direction right now. Yeah, you can look at this holy trinity of the stock market, the real estate market, and you know unemployment and think that's all that matters, but that couldn't be further from the truth because what really matters are all these little stories that you don't hear about until it all starts snowballing into a big story. Why do you think gold is exploding right now? You know, like that's a major sign that things are not going the way that we're being told right now because we keep getting told that inflation is doing better and you know the economy is improving and we're expected to see another smashing year with GDP. And that's all due to government spending and people spending money they don't have using debt, all right? 
That's what all this is based on. Well, people that are smart with money are realizing this and they're buying gold and silver, guys. In fact, gold prices have just been smashing through the roof, all right? Just a few weeks ago, you could buy a one ounce of gold for like $2,100. Today, it's closer to $2,400. So just in the span of a few weeks, it has climbed over $300 an ounce. And that's because people worldwide are realizing that their fiat currency is worthless. I've told people many times in the past on the channel that they should own some gold and silver. I'm not saying to throw all your money that you ever made in your life into it, but it is good to have some as a hedge against inflation, guys. And this is proof right here. You know, we're starting to see this in action. You know, we haven't really seen the price of gold and silver move up tremendously over the past couple of years but it has gone up but now it's really shooting up and before you know it it might be too expensive for most people to even buy now if you haven't bought some already and the people who are buying this are noticing that inflation is going in the wrong direction. You know, we just got two or three CPI readings in a row that were higher than they should be, and it's starting to go back up again. It's not going back down. And from what I've seen many other people who are much smarter than me explain is that inflation comes in waves. We were kind of like on this down wave for a long time, and now it's starting to rise back up. And the odds of that being stopped are very minimal. So it's reasonable to think that inflation is coming back with a vengeance right now. And one of the things that has contributed to inflation has been the rising cost of all forms of insurance. We're talking health insurance, property insurance, car insurance, all of this has been a major contributor to inflation because it has gone up so much, right? Well, there's an insurance company here in Florida called Florida Peninsula Insurance. And they announced like a week ago that they're gonna be cutting their rates by about 2% on average. And this rate reduction will take effect July 15th for new customers and August 1st for renewing customers. That's if you get renewed, they fail to mention that. Like, yeah, we're gonna lower rates, but you might get dropped. <laughs> now, people in the insurance industry and you know the politicians here in Florida are saying that the uh, changes that they made being able to sue insurance companies is starting to help the insurance market here rebound. And this latest example of these guys lowering their rates by 2% is an example of that. And it's funny guys, listen to this. They go, this planned rate reduction should come as great relief to many Florida homeowners who have been suffering through this insurance crisis. Florida Peninsula Insurance's dedicated analytics team did their advanced calculations and recommended a 2% decrease in premiums. We are happy to be able to offer this reduction to Florida residents. The industry is showing indications of stabilization thanks to hard work of our state legislators. So clearly these guys are all patting each other on the back, but let me tell you, or let me ask you, if you live here in Florida and your insurance bill goes down by 2%, are you gonna be jumping up for joy? Is that gonna save you a lot of money? Is that gonna help you pay for your $1,600 a month GMC Sierra payment? Let me know. I mean, this company has 122,332 policies here in Florida as of December 31st last year. And it'll be funny to see what that number is at the end of this year to see if it actually goes down. Because if it does, then it, you know, this whole rate cut means nothing because they're just cutting rates, but they're also eliminating, you know, their clients that are probably the highest risk and uh, you know they just have less people to worry about and less, less people to insure. So it's like, yeah, is it moving in the right direction? Of course, guys, that's why I wanted to bring this up because people who want the feel good stories, eh, 2% reduction in insurance should make you feel great. I mean, it's not going up, so you should be happy. But you know, just like anything else at home, you know, if prices came down by 2%, nobody would be celebrating that. A 2% decrease in price on anything right now is just not very meaningful. Even in real estate, guys, like, yeah, that would help save you a little bit of money, but it's not gonna be a game changer. And here's the big caveat with this whole thing, okay? When Florida gets slammed with the next hurricane, not if, because it will be when, this can easily cause premiums to jump back up. This is something I've read in other insurance stories talking about, yeah, we might see you know some insurance companies lower rates a little bit here and there, but as soon as we get hit with the next major disaster, they're all gonna spike up again. So you better believe 
that this reduction in insurance rates is probably just going to be temporary at best here. One of my viewers, Antonio, also sent me this hypothetical scenario that I wanted to bring up here on the channel since I was talking about these high car payments today. And this kind of plays right into that. And he said, you know, Michael, if you look at, say you take somebody making 20 bucks an hour and look at all the debt payments that they have, they could be actually paying all of their salary, if not the lion's share of it, just to service debt right now, okay? And the scenario he gave me is somebody who makes $20 an hour and they work 2,000 hours a year, that makes them $40,000 a year, and that's before tax, of course. And if they have a $200,000 mortgage balance at 6% right now, that's $12,000 a year. If they have an auto loan at $30,000 with an 8% rate, that's $2,400 a year. And if they have uh, credit card debt, now this one's kind of exaggerated, which is where I think it'd be the biggest variable here, because those two are very realistic so far. But he gave the example of credit card debt at 100K <laughs> and 22% interest, okay? That's $22,000 a year in interest payments to service that debt. So somebody like this would be completely upside down, basically, and have no money left over. They would be spending all of their money on servicing debt. But let's say, for example, this person even had no credit card debt, zero, all right? You're still spending close to half of your income servicing your mortgage debt and your auto loan debt because you're already spending you know, $14,500 a year, that has to get paid out of your money after taxes and you only make $40,000 before taxes. So it's reasonable to say that that is literally half of someone's income going just to service the car and the house, guys. And if you say, wait a minute, I don't even make $20 an hour, well, just move to California and start working for fast food, guys. You'll make 20 bucks an hour, no problem. These examples are the perfect real life scenarios of why you shouldn't be taking on debt right now and you know these interest rates they're not even historically high but it's already high enough to put a lot of people in the poorhouse as we have gone over in this video and this is why i think rates need to go even higher guys because if the fed were to raise interest rates to 10 say 15 percent something crazy like that it's not unheard of they did it back in the 1980s but if they did that to purchase anything with debt would become so prohibitively expensive overnight that most people just couldn't do it. They could not take on the payment. They wouldn't qualify for the payment, first of all. They wouldn't be able to get the loan to begin with. And it might even make our government take a second look and say, wait a minute, maybe we shouldn't borrow anymore either because it's too expensive. So I've heard a lot of this talk lately about lowering rates and that's supposed to help inflation. It's not, guys. It's just going to make it worse. It's already coming back with a vengeance, and we haven't even lowered rates yet. So obviously the lesson here is to get out of this debt, guys, and do not be a fool. Do not have a $1,000, $1,500 a month car payment. This is just absolute ludicrous. If you can afford a car that expensive, then pay cash for it. Because just look at that example I gave you, you know, throwing away Forty grand in interest just in the first year or two of the loan for this car is just absolute nonsense, guys. It's such a stupid financial decision. And think of what you could do with an extra forty grand right now that somebody else wasted. Just think about that. So, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't want to wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.